we have two things in front of us one is the dvd caddy with the ssd support and then we have a 2.5 inch ssd uh, we start by removing the back panel actually if there is a screw missing for the dvd drive but that's fine like you will probably have one for yourself and you can remove it and after that you can gently pry off the body panel or this out goes and let me open the dvd carry so this carry is uh, like a regular one but instead of the dvd rom inside like the dvd drive player with the writer it'll have a space wherein you can insert necessity and this is the ssd itself crucial a good brand i think this is about 460 gigs Uh, it also has a black uh, plastic, like a filler plastic. We'll need that later. Uh, we won't need it now. I'll take it away. I'm just trying to see which way it goes in. Uh, yeah, this is the way it goes in. Gently push it from the other side. Uh, yeah, you can also pull it gently or pull it from the down under you hear a audible click or a snap sound yeah and then and then secure these with uh, four bolts or sorry so four screws From the old DVD drive, you can transfer this. Uh, yeah, this is kind of a clamp kind of thing that used to secure the, the DVD drive to, to the laptop so that it's not accidentally removed during operation. And you can also transfer the the, the black part. I mean, the black strip. Uh, it's not a good great fit. That's fine. I'll just put it and use it. And then, yeah, the pan goes back. The main idea is I, I, I wanted to use the, uh, the old HDD as a secondary drive. That's why I, I invested in a carry. Otherwise, we could just buy a, a um, SA, you know, USB to SATA or SATA to USB cable and get it done. But what I've done now is I've installed a software and I've cloned the device, basically HDD to it, SSD. Uh, once that is done, um, I need to make the SSD as a primary uh, disk, uh, like you know, basically attach it to the motherboard, remove it from the caddy and attach it to the motherboard, and maybe use the old uh, HDD uh, back into the caddy, put it put in the back into the caddy, and use it as a, like a secondary storage. Yeah, here we are just going about removing all the screws, maybe 8 to 10, I don't know, just, yeah, so many screws out there, the back panel. And the reason that I'm doing here is, uh, this is um, for for the uh, Dell laptops, uh, at least for this model. Uh, a DVD-ROM is not a bootable, I mean, it, it's bootable, but it's it doesn't seem to, you know, boot the OS from the DVD-ROM. 
uh, I mean uh, the SSD caddy basically so I had to just put it back into the motherboard uh, so that it's, it becomes a bootable thing um, just removing the batteries I've removed this keyboard so many times so I know exactly where to uh, apply pressure basically there'll be four slots uh, where you can put a screwdriver or a spatula or maybe even if you have a little bit of fingernails you can use it and gently pry it open you'll hear clicks 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 like there'll be about four clicks and then it'll be out and you need to take the bus as well just disconnect this one off it goes these are the other buses like one is like a keyboard uh, to motherboard keyboard bus and there's, there'll be one ma uh, mouse or the trackpad bus and there'll be another one for the power like the power button right so there'll be three things once these three things are disconnected just go about um, unscrewing the three screws on on the button on, on the on the keyboard so I forgot to remove the other one I'll have to remove the other one as well the third one and then only the panel will come off otherwise it won't uh, yeah I'm still figuring out in this one maybe I should have figured out by now yeah I mean uh, it takes a while to come off yeah yeah gently put in nails or spatula whatever works better for you just gently pry it open don't break it hard to find the uh, spare parts and don't hurt yourself I, I almost hurt my nails by <laughs> putting it under uh, then, yeah, maybe use a spatula or something and at this point I discovered that uh, yeah I, sh I should have removed the other screw as well so you know and then it just comes off da -da -da. I didn't want to put any audio for this uh, or like you know background music and you know sometimes it's like a clamoring noise I don't, I don't want to use that I just want to talk wherever it's necessary so yeah there, there's a small connector there just remove it like it'll be like a just apply some pressure and put it down pull it down and you don't need to actually remove the fan cable because the fan cable will still be intact but anyways so there'll be around four screws on this board at various places marked by arrow marks and you can remove it one by one just uh, if possible keep all the um, screws uh, in a different uh, let's say uh, holders cup holders or something so that you don't lose track of you know which screw goes where maybe you can draw it down if you want if that works okay for you you can draw the position of the screws um, so yeah at this point I figured out that I need to have the display out uh, before I can pull pull out the motherboard so I'll just gently disconnect the bus I'll be using a bit of about four screws uh, yeah I'll be using those and disconnecting those I think I've removed only two screws. I'll still need to remove the other two screws on the right. Yeah, because that's the way it works. I mean, the the display has to literally come off uh, before we can pull out the motherboard. That's the way it's assembled. So yeah, I'm jiggling it and trying to find out what's happening here, and then I figured out. Yeah, we also need to disconnect these two. So I mean, unscrew these two screws. Once that's done, um, the motherboard is available to pull off. All right. What next? Yep. Yeah. Uh, actually, I mean the the art. So in total six screws on the uh, yeah HDD four screws um, to, to hold them to onto the plates and then the, there's on addition two screws that, that, that goes the plates get latched to the board so I've just you can just remove the two two screws and that, that's good enough and then there'll be a little bit of adhesive so 
just use a plastic credit card or something and then pull it off uh, and then get the adhesive off and then you can take the hard drive out now uh, i'm transferring the sdd from the caddy onto the motherboard that's what i'm trying to do here and gently take it off it should come off yeah, it is a bit tighter than i thought anyways we can see that ssd is less thick than the hdd so we'll be using the rectangular plastic thingy that they gave uh, that came along with the ssd and we'll put it first and then yeah we'll put it first and then we'll put uh the hdd sorry about the camera angle some of the bits were cut off yeah you can see that it goes and snaps in and put the screws back on those two screws that that goes into the motherboard Alrighty. um or what next putting things together uh, be gentle uh, you need to align the usb and fan vents and everything to, to the plastic board so take your time do it slowly and the display can be now put back the interesting thing that i found is after assembling it the wi-fi seem to not work uh, I have a dual boot system. It worked on Windows 7, but not on Windows 10. And uh, I had to enable it. There's a physical key on the keyboard to enable the Wi-Fi, like, you know, a function key that enables the Wi-Fi. Somehow it's, it's, it was turned off and I had to enable it and then the Wi-Fi started working. Uh, I mean, basically function key plus enable Wi-Fi button. Anyways, here we are putting the screws back on and then the buses for the displays this this laptop is about 10 years old I, it surprises me that you know the old things still work yeah i mean back in the days when when they built products it i think it's built to last long uh, i might have you like you know opened it up like maybe several times to do uh, different things like you know replacing the batteries that you see there that's the bios battery and you know, replace other things fan yeah one time the fan went out and i had to use the replace the uh, fan unit uh, replace it once for the battery unit open it uh, all right all right all right what's what's happening here yeah i mean you st if you still want to use the old um hdd just uh Put it in the caddy and uh, put it. In. I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm just screwing the old HDD into into the caddy. All right, it should it should go. All right, snap it back in. Tick, tick, tick. You'll hear some sounds. Don't break anything. Be gentle. Slowly work your way from one side to other. Yeah, there's a power bus. You just put it back in. This one's the keyboard bus. This one's the trackpad. As that's in, I think we can put the three, three screws back. Number one, number two, and number three. And then, 
usual routine put the keyboard um yeah put the keyboard bus and snap it back onto play into the place and what's left uh i mean like at this point if you have um uh yeah if you have the screws for the hdd i'm sorry the this drive also put it put the, put the safety screws that's near the ram that you can see to the center of the screen and otherwise that's fine uh, yeah put back the other screws in and the battery and the and then you go back Yeah, use the bottom left approach like you know just snap it to the bottom first and to the left and then push it and then it should go inside all right so yeah it used to take like five minutes to boot it was crazy slow because i've never used it i mean i've hardly used it uh, in the recent years but then after this upgrade yeah it came down from five minutes to 15 seconds because it, it, it took, took, took 20 seconds actually, but then the, the, those five seconds was was, was um, the operating system choice menu that, that, that defaults at five seconds. So if you subtract that in about 15 seconds, it goes from power on to ready to use. 